Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our leadership development session tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that the word will not be stale in any life, that everything we hear from the throne of God will bring fire, fervency, ambition to every life in Jesus' name. That will not be so familiar with the word that then the word does not bear fruit anymore in our lives, but that the word will penetrate every heart and yield perfect fruit and yield purposeful life and ministry in every life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this hour, thank you for this moment. We thank you because your word is ever new. We're asking, Lord, that as you have preserved the truth for us, this truth will do good in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Today we come to an important passage of scripture. The Bible says in Romans chapter 15 verse 4 that whatsoever things were reaching for time, they are reaching for our learning. That is, we ministers, we members of the church, and everyone that claims that he belongs to the Lord, whatsoever. In Genesis, in Malachi, in Matthew, in Revelation, and in between Genesis and Revelation everywhere. Whatsoever things were written aforetime, before this time, they were written for our learning. And so as you come, you have to learn from the Word of God. You need to prepare your heart, empty your heart of past notions, past ideas, past opinion, and say, Lord, speak for your servant, your sons, your daughters, the members, the ministers are learning, ready to hear. They are for learning that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Genesis chapter 49, reading from verse 5. Here is Jacob telling the story of his life, his observation, and what in particular he had discovered about Simeon, one of the sons, and Levi. And here we have in Genesis chapter 49, we're reading from verse 5. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. And then it says in verse 6, it says, Oh, my soul, the old man is coming to the end of his life. And now he's remembering what Simeon and Levi had done with the character and the instrument and the activity and action of cruelty. And it says, So my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly mine honor. Be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man in their self-will. They dig down a wall. Then in verse 7, it says, Cause it be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob, and I will scatter them in Israel. Now, we have a choice whether to be bitter or to be blessed whether to show the bitterness of anger or the blessedness of affection. 
We need to tell whether our lives will be that life of fierceness or our life will be a life of forgiveness. There is a choice tonight. The message is bitterness or blessedness. Choose. In Second Samuel chapter 2, verse 26, Then Abner called to Joab and said, Shall the sword devour forever? Knowest thou not that it will be bitterness in the latter end? Whatever we do, any moment of time, we should not only think of the consequence at this moment of time. We should think of the future, our action, our reaction. When something has happened to a daughter, to a son, to a member of the family, something that shouldn't have happened, we act and react either in bitterness because we're not thinking of the consequence of our action in the future. Oh, we respond with grace, we respond with forgiveness, we respond with blessedness, we have a choice to make. And so Abner was telling Joab, think about this. Would you want bitterness in the latter age or would you want blessedness in the latter age how long shall it be then ere before thou bid the people return from following their brethren as we look at the story today i want you to look at that last line the way we have been acting is it with bitterness? Is it with blessedness? How long? Don't you know that this will result into bitterness, not only in the latter age, but beyond the latter age on earth? How long? Are you going to tell? Are you going to beat those under your authority? Those under your tutelage, those under your influence, enough is enough. Are you going to kill ourselves? What has happened has happened. Make a choice. Bitter or blessed? Bitterness or blessedness? Make a choice. There are three things we are considering today. Number one, the bitterness of anger and revenge. Number two, the blessedness of the attitude of non-retaliation. Think about it in your life. The attitude of non-retaliation. Things will happen as things have always happened. Do you retaliate? Do you take revenge? Do you say, I give it to him. Even if he touches his blood, his life, I'll deal with him. Revenge, retaliation. But as we look at the teaching of Christ, our Savior, our Lord, in the things that happen in our lives, it says, blessed are the meek. And then he explains in the following verses, what we are to do, who we are to be, how we are to act, and we should be proactive, thinking about the future and thinking about what this will be in the future, bitter or blessed. Number two, then, the blessedness of the attitude of non-retaliation. Number three, the believers were the armor of righteousness. The believers were the armor of righteousness. The armor we carry. 
the instruments we carry, the tools we carry, is this of the beloved, the only begotten Son of God, will Christ act like this? Will the believers in the early church, would they have acted like that? Would the father of faith, Abraham, would he have acted like this? If we take this position, if we go this direction, a man, a woman, anyone, a minister, a preacher, a pastor, a coordinator, a group coordinator, a father, a mother, if we act in this way, will this be the perfect expression of the life of a believer? The believers, true believers, with the armor of righteousness. Let's come to number one. Number one, the bitterness of anger and revenge. Remember the story. Dinah went to see the daughters of the land. I think that's the other side of it. She went to be seen by the daughters of the land. You see, everything has two sides. The coin has two sides. To see the daughters of the land and to be seen by the daughters of the land. When we aimlessly move around, aimlessly go around in a new community, are we to see the daughters of the land or to be seen by the daughters of the land? Obviously, Hammon, Shechem, saw her. Not only to see, they will see you too. And if you go about without thinking of the action, of the character, of the people that will see you and what they will see of you and what they will demand of you, you have not thought well. And we're told that the son saw her, the son of the prince, and then took her. Obviously, from the story, it wasn't rape. She yielded herself. And when what was done was done, she didn't turn back home. She stayed there. Because it was when Simeon and Levi had destroyed that family, that house, that they took Dinah. She was staying there. You see, the uncircumcised heart, the unsanctified heart, the depraved heart, in roaming about and going about, there is something, a longing in the heart of Dinah herself going that direction. And then these brothers of Dinah didn't even condemn her action. They didn't rebuke her. These were indulgent brethren. And the father didn't even say anything to her. Look at what you have brought on me and on our family. Nothing like that. There are indulgent parents, indulgent fathers, indulgent mothers and there are indulgent neighbors your daughter has a tendency to wander around to roam about and you want to say hey diana don't do that and the neighbors they come and they say leave her alone she's just a little daughter she's just a young girl they wouldn't allow us to correct our children it happens in the church too if somebody is going the wrong direction if somebody is doing something wrong and the father in the house not wanting to be an indulgent father if he says hey diana that's not right 
all the age maids of thine arm, they will rise up and they will say, why should he address Dinah like that? That's, uh, you know, our sister. And even the adults, they will say, why? Why is the father in the house correcting the child like that? And yet, when the evil thing happens, they'll blame the father. Ah, but you are the one that didn't allow me to correct my child. When the child was still in his or in her formative stage, now you condemn me. Now you chastise me. Now you criticize me and you say, look at his son, look at his daughter. You are the one at fault. I would have, you know, said, my daughter, my son, you can't go that direction. But everybody will go against their father and say, why are you talking like that? Don't you know that children, young people, have their time of being at ease and at liberty? It happens in our church here. And so we need to look at the future and think of the future when parents are correcting their children. Now, Simeon and Levi, nothing else they could do except to show their anger and their revenge. Number one, the bitterness of anger and revenge. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, the danger and defilement of aimless wanderers. Number two, the deception and damnation of angry wormwood. Number three, the denunciation and destiny of assertive willfulness. Look at number one. Number one is the danger and defilement of aimless wanderers. Look at Genesis chapter 34, verse 1. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bear unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. No record that she told the father, Jacob, and the mother, Leah, Daddy, Mommy, I want to go out. I want to go and see the daughters of the land. So that they would have told her, you're too young. These people are heathens. They are unbelievers. These people are sinners to the core. They do not have the same standard that we have. It is dangerous for you at your age to go alone, all right? If you're going to go, go with another sister. Go with one of your brothers. Two are better than one. No permission. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, And when she came the son of Hamel, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. She didn't cry out. If a man finds a maid on the field and forces her, and she cries out, and there was no one to deliver her, when that sin, that act comes out, the punishment will be on the man. Because the lady cried out, and there was nobody to deliver. Dinah did not cry out. It was a pleasurable experience for her. And so, as people wonder about, look at First Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. In verse 13, it says, And without, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. That applies to Diana. That applies to teenagers. That applies to older people that they do not have an important essential thing to do normally in our adult life we should have goals we set for ourselves goals for the week goals for the month goals for the quarter goals for the year 
and then when we start the working day on Monday we're working towards our goal even if we're working from home or we're working in the office we're saying this is what I should achieve by the end of the week and if you're like that you'll be asking yourself the assignment and the duty and the responsibility of this week at what level am I and so that will cover roaming about anywhere roaming about today is not only getting out of a house and then uh, going out roaming about you can roam about on your phone you can roam about on the internet you can roam about searching this and surfing this and surfing that there are people that roam about so much they discover a man to marry on social media the people that throw me about they have friends they've never met they only meet on the social media people roam about today a lot married people they roam about men and women they roam about and then they get into trouble now it says they wander from house to house not only idle but tactless also and busy body speaking things they ought not how could that happen look at verse 12 in verse 12 having damnation because they have cast off their first faith they have cast off their first faith when people cast off their first faith their first conviction and their first level and height of character then they can roam about you know sometimes people you don't know how they get your number i get you know such uh, you know things uh, people will send uh, and they say just to greet you that's uh, it and then they talk blah 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 and if they're using a uh, whatsapp you can see their picture there maybe some people even want to take those special pictures and you didn't know them if you reply them they were roaming about they got you. You are wondering yourself. But if you understand, my life is more precious than that. And my ministry and the value of my life is more precious than that. You're not allowed those who are roaming and they roam to your WhatsApp and then you accept them. You will take a stand. You know how to block your phone from somebody who is a wanderer block that number and then he tells us in proverbs chapter 21 verse 16 it says in proverbs 21 16 the man that wanders out of the way of understanding not only diana not only a woman not only a girl not only a teenager but the man the man that wanders out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead when your spirit is dead your convictions dead and your vision dead and your future dead because you're just roaming 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 about and you know as you use your phone and your tablet and the desktop as you're looking for something legitimate something will pop up that thing that pops up another one will pop up another one will pop up if you are a wanderer you will leave your focus you will leave what you are looking for you will click the things that pop up and it will take you somewhere and understand all those things that pop up and you search for them look for them and you become interested in them the people who manage the social media they know all those things that you are pursuing are running after and they know your name they have the records if they wanted to come out eventually they'll tell you that this is who you are you call yourself a christian holiness man holiness woman but this is what you follow in your serving it says just to wander away like that and they wander away from the way of understanding they will be in the congregation of the dead your conscience will die 
because as you do that every time you don't have any standard anymore any conviction anymore your conscience will be seared and you'll be doing those things once you know you think hey, you know my brother does not know my sister does not know my husband does not know my wife does not know my neighbors do not know god knows and the people who are at the back of that what we call artificial intelligence they also know that this is the pattern of your life but now conscience is dead i pray the lord will keep us in jesus name let me have a good good amen, amen. number two here number two the deception and damnation of angry wormwood look at genesis chapter 34 we're reading from verse 7 it says in verse 7 and the sons of jacob came out of the field when they heard it and the men were grieved and they were very wroth very angry because they had wrought folly in israel in line with jacob's daughter which thing ought not to be done look at verse 8 there in verse 8 and hammer commute of them saying the soul of my son shake him longeth for your daughter i pray you give her to him to wife and then in verse 9 it says and make marriages with us that we're not just asking for Dinah now. Dinah is just to be the gateway for us to get to you. Make marriages with us and give your daughters unto us. And make and take our daughters unto you. Look at verse, uh, look at verse 13. In verse 13, and the sons of Jacob answered, shake him and Amor his father deceitfully and said because he had defiled Dinah their sister now if you don't have anything you can't give it whatever happens if you don't have anger in you whatever happens anger will not come out if you're carrying a bowl of water and somebody pushes you if the water spills only what is inside the bowl will spill if deception spills out of you it's because deception was inside you if anger spills us from you it's because anger was inside you it was not the action that caused the anger the action only revealed the deception which was inside they said because he had defiled Dinah their sister watch people something happens unexpectedly and angry language angry vocabulary you never thought they knew came out of them now it's not that action that brought the vocabulary the vocabulary was inside and that thing that happened that created chance for the vocabulary to come out just revealed what you were on the inside and so the deception was their nature was their life was their character only that what happened now brought that deception and it says they answered deceitfully look at verse 14 verse 14 says and they said unto them we cannot do this thing to give our sister to one that is uncircumcised for that one a reproach unto us look at verse 15 in verse 15 but in this will we consent unto you and he didn't show their face that they were lying there are lie detectors 
that the government people use that if somebody is telling a lie that lie detector will know that that is a lie those of us who are not working with the government and we don't see we don't have an instrument like that you can tell sometimes with the look on the face sometimes with the embarrassment in the person sometimes with the kind of action that the fellow is not saying but you can tell and if you know the person that when this happens that's what he says when that happens that's what she does you can tell that it's a lie but she came and Hamo did not see that this was a lie and when God abandons any of us and then he gives us strong delusion that we should believe a lie. If you're a minister and, you know, people tell lies to you and you never know that's a lie and they set you running on the basis of a lie. It's a delusion that they might believe a lie and be damned because they are in delusion. You need to take care in your life that you don't take any decision. Any decision in ministry, any decision in your life, any decision that is going to be of great consequence because you are in a strong delusion because people are acting out lies. They are telling you lies. They are, you know, kind of uh, making stories that will make you believe a lie the Lord deliver us in Jesus name and then they said that every male of you be circumcised Simeon and Levi took the sacred covenant of God circumcision and they used that to kill and to destroy are there people that take the sacred doctrine earnestly contained for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints they don't have any conscience they take that sacred faith and that sacred valuable heavenly commodity and they you see they just throw it here and there to one another in making play in making jest in uh, telling lies and deceiving other people in acting out even in going on their journey of immorality these people took the sacred covenant of the lord and they said you know if you are circumcised like we are circumcised then we'll make marriages with you look at verse 16 in verse 16 it says then we will give our daughters unto you there are people who speak confidently and they know they're telling lies there are people who speak persuasively and they know they're telling lies the people that have an injurious murderous thought plan project plan and program in their heart to hurt their brother to hurt their sister to hurt their neighbor and they speak persuasively the people that set traps for their neighbor for their brother for their sister and they will fall into that trap and they will lose their life spiritually they will lose their conviction and these people they become so friendly and they say you know we'll do that only on one condition if you will do this and do this and they follow it up with a smile and you are caught and you are caught if you are in strong delusion you are caught and then it says and we will dwell with you and we will become one people and then in verse 17 it says but if you would not hearken unto us we tell you a lie but if you will not buy that lie then don't hope for any fellowship between us are there people like that they tell you a lie your sense is a lie 
and they're looking at you that you sense it's a lie and they say okay if you don't buy it if you don't accept it you're going to lose this opportunity and then you forget yourself because you are looking for this opportunity you're looking for this achievement now you buy the lie god will deliver us that's the world in which we're living that's the religious community in which we're living it says but if ye will not hearken unto us to be circumcised then we will take our daughter and we will be gone and shake him and him could not picture taking Dinah my friend they're still going to take Dinah but they're going to take Dinah after you've lost your life after you've lost your conviction after you've lost everything you built up until this time the still going to take the diner they're not making you the promise because they love you and because they want to be of benefit to you you are still going to lose that diner and they say if you don't buy the lie if you don't accept the lie if you don't succumb and submit to this we'll take diner and then we'll be gone well what has happened has happened if you have to take diner will feel it because they already had intimate association with Diana. But uh, there's something you need to learn as a Christian, as a believer. You need to learn how to lose something happily, joyfully. And you say, that is gone. I don't know whether that has saved my life. That is taken away from me. Good. I don't know. God has allowed that. Maybe that has preserved my life. Maybe that sin I keep at the price they're giving me to pay for that sin. If I do that, maybe I will lose my life later. Maybe I will lose heaven. Maybe I will lose conviction. Maybe I will lose everything. So if Diana is the only thing I lose now, God help me to bear the loss. What a great prayer. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, and it came to pass on the third day when they were sore. That is from the circumcision the wound, the pain of the wound, when they were sore, the two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brethren, took each man his sword and came upon the city. Hold on. Simeon, those are innocent people. They didn't know when Shechem was making the deal of Diana. So if your anger is only because shaking a defiled Diana, even if you are going to express your anger, why? Express the anger on the whole city. It's difficult to limit anger. It's difficult to confine anger in our lives. Once you allow anger to take effect on a particular spot for a particular action, it takes away our thinking. We will not think those are innocent people. The one you have a quarrel with is shaken. Even the father one or two of the shaking at the father, I want to defile Dinah, but he killed everybody in the city, killed Shechem, killed Amor. In our lives, the husband is unhappy, angry with the wife. And instead of, you know, between them both, my wife, 
I'm angry at this. I'm unhappy about this. They visit the anger on all the children. I won't pay their school fees. I won't listen to them. They visit the anger on the in-laws. They are angry with one person. They are angry with shaking. And the anger must be visited on everybody. They even visit the anger on themselves. They don't think about their future. They don't think about their testimony. They don't think about the value of their lives and their calling. And everything spoils in their hands. I pray God will deliver us. Look at that verse 25. It came to pass on the third day when they were so. Have you been like that before? At school? I knew two friends and one friend stronger than the other in our school, secondary school. And then when I can see the face of that one, I remember the name, when that one was sick, the stronger one. This other one that claimed to be a friend, then began to ill-treat that one, punch, box push and all that because he knew he was now weak because of the sickness both of them they were not born again but it was bad enough now those who are born again that's what they say when they see that the other one is having distress sickness weakness this is the chance he was strong and now he's down that's the time to increase the distress when they are sore when they are sick that's the time to pounce on them and then to do evil where the love of god in you and then we're told, and they came on the city boldly and slew all the males. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, and they slew Hamor and shake him, his son, on the edge of the sword. Did they think of life after death? Did they think what we are going to do now? The consequence on them, poor shaking, poor hammer, and poor members and citizens of this city. Did they think that killing them is sending them to a lost eternity? Are you so angry with somebody? That you will do something that will cut short his life, that will make him to go into eternity without being ready. What has she done? What has she done? That will merit him going to hell hundred years, a thousand years, a million years, a trillion years forever and ever if we thought of the consequence of our action will not be evangelizing by word of mouth and then sending people to hell forever because you are angry and really you don't have any right to be angry You've done something greater than that in the past, and God forgive you. And shouldn't you have compassion on this, your brother, on this, your neighbor, as I had compassion on thee? Let's watch that our action is not of deception that will lead to damnation because of angry bitterness. That word. One word there means bitterness. We're looking at number three there. Number three, it says denunciation and destiny of assertive willfulness. You know, willful people are stubborn people, and they don't think about 
their action about their utterance they don't think about the project they pursue willfulness makes everyone anyone that has that willful character to forget about consequences that's why a son can talk to a father anyhow willfulness makes him to forget hey young man that's daddy that's why a daughter will approach the mother in a very rude unthinkable way daughter that's mommy that's why a younger person will forget that the older person contributes to his life and to his joy young man don't allow willfulness and stubbornness to make you forget that you cannot live alone you need him you need her and so if you are thoughtful the willfulness will not be there but look at genesis chapter 49 reading from verse 6 oh my soul come not thou into their secret unto their assembly mine honor be not thou united for in their anger they slew a man and in their self will they dig down a wall verse 7 in verse 7 it says cause it be their anger for it was fierce it was senseless it was furious it was deadly and their wrath for it was cruel i will divide them in jacob i will scatter them in israel their action cut off the lives of those people in the city and cut off their offspring the people that have been given back to by those people their lives have been cut short the families have been destroyed the king and the son had been destroyed because of what they were trying to do now this diana were trying to protect what's the character of diana what's the future of diana how did diana eventually get married what can we read any good thing about the progress of the life of that look at the person they were protecting no future and yet they spoiled and destroyed their own future because of that diana let's come to point number two now point number two the blessedness of the attitude of non retaliation three things here marriage relationship with reprobates forbidden by god they were proposing if this happens then we'll give high marriage and all our daughters number two malicious revenge and retaliation found among the godless number three merciful redemption and reconciliation founded on grace we're looking at number one number one marriage relationship with reprobates forbidden by god we're looking at deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 1 Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 1 when the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it and has cast out many nations before thee the Hittites the Gergashites the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. Look at verse 3. It says in verse 3, neither 
shalt thou make marriages for them. Even if they will accept to be circumcised, neither will they make marriages for them. Even if they will say, okay, we'll follow you to church, we'll change your dressing, we will sing your song, we will do what you do, neither shall thou make marriages for them. Thy daughter, thou shalt not give unto his son, and his daughter shalt thou not take unto thy son. We're looking at Second Corinthians chapter 6, and we're reading from verse 14. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? Now, we need to make sure that our own sons and daughters really are born again, that they are righteous. Just because they are our daughters doesn't mean that they are born again, that they are dressing like, you know, we dress, doesn't mean they are born again. There must be that conviction that they have repented of their sin, they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and by conviction, not because of daddy, not because of mommy, not the people who are saying, I'll be following daddy and mommy to church now when I grow old and I'm able to take decision by myself. I'm not going to go to their church or them anymore. Not those ones. The ones who are really born again and they do not have any interest. They do not have any attachment. They do not have any fellowship, any friendship ways the unrighteous what communion has light of darkness and then in verse 15 it says and what concord has christ rebellion or what part has he that believeth with an infidel verse 16 tells us it says and what agreement agreement in marriage what agreement agreement in fellowship what agreement agreement in conviction has the temple of god with idols for ye are the temple of the living God As God has said I will dwell in them And walk in them I will be their God and they shall be my people In verse 17 it says Wherefore come out From among them It is not at the time They are now coming home They are now saying daddy uh, I wanted to tell you something I didn't know I will tell you mommy I feel this may break your heart But this is me now I don't want to pretend anymore i have an unbeliever i want to marry it's too late watch over them pray over them instruct them in the way they ought to go and make sure that they really have the conviction not because of daddy not because of mommy god said I should not be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. It says, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you, verse 18, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Number two there, number two, malicious rebellion. Revenge and retaliation found among the godless. Malicious revenge among the godless. And look at First John chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 12. First John chapter 3, verse 12. It says, Not as Cain. Cain and Abel were brothers. Cain offered a sacrifice and God will not accept it. It was the work of his son. Abel offered a sacrifice and God had respect unto Abel and to his offering. And now Abel did not suspect anything. You know, the people who are angry and you can see it on their face, and so you can run away from danger, the danger of anger at that time. They don't, they have not practiced anger, revenge, retaliation to the point they can have it. And they have the bad thing in the heart. 
but you will not know. But the people who are perfected the way of anger, animosity, malice, hatred, and you will not see, Abel could not tell. They were together and they spoke together and Cain so managed his anger and covered it that Abel never suspected anything. Let's be very careful in our lives because if we master our anger and we were able to cover it, the same effort and training you gave yourself to master the anger and not to show it, and you are dangerous. Can't you use that same method to manage yourself and say, this is wrong in my life, that is wrong in my life, and you manage that, and you go to God, and the Lord gives you the victory, and then your life becomes straightforward, open, very clear. And if you are unhappy with something, you call the person and say, my friend, I am not happy with this. And the fellow says, are you angry? Sure. I'm angry. I'm angry at your action. I'm not angry at you. Otherwise, I wouldn't have called you. If I left you doing what you're doing and I didn't talk, you might perish because your life does not match up to the expectation of the Lord. I'm angry at your action. And then he's able to settle that. She's able to settle that rather than are not allow them to see that I'm angry. But the thing is inside the heart, and you are going to do evil. That thing in the heart, like the lion, will come out and destroy. That's why it says, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brothers righteous let's come to number three there number three merciful redemption and reconciliation founded on grace we need the grace of god and it is the grace of god that makes us compassionate is the conviction we have in christ that makes us truly loving and truly friendly and we're redeemed and we're willing to reconcile rather than you know this has happened death will be the final penalty Simeon Levi that has happened it takes two to go into such a relationship and your sister you are depending, she's still there. She's enjoying what she's doing. Why are you going to kill only one part of the, of the deal? And the other part, you leave alone. What are you telling Diana? You are telling Diana, go as far as you want to go. Go as high as you want to go. Go as deep as you want to go. We know it's wrong. We'll not do anything to you will support you, will protect you, but will deal with the partners of evil. Be very careful. Oh, why are you partial? Why did you bring this woman? What caught this woman in the act of adultery? And Moses' law said, we well, should stone her. Where is the man? Why didn't you bring the man? Why are you partial? In your judgment they shouldn't have done that we should have mercy through the redemption of the Lord and reconciliation founded on the grace of God it says in Hebrews chapter 4 reading from verse 16 Hebrews chapter 4 reading from verse 16 let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace when something has happened and you are jolted, don't rush to the person who has done what jolts you. When something has happened and you feel offended, 
don't be boisterous and go immediately to the person that is making your heart to boil go into your chamber approach the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy yourself lord if my heart were like yours if my mind were like yours i wouldn't be boiling inside like that go into privacy and approach god for his mercy and find grace to help in the time of need pray for yourself first lord you may come anytime and this thing that is brewing in my heart and giving me suggestions as to what I should do, how I should approach the matter with angry revenge. I need your help. And then the grace of God will come to you. Don't stand up here from the prayer and pray now for the person who is giving you that kind of hot, boiling heart within oh lord if she were to come inside me and think with my brain and see with my sight and feel the way i feel she wouldn't have done that if he were to come inside me and feel and see and think the way i think he wouldn't have said that or done that have mercy on him have mercy on her give her wisdom give him wisdom give him a change of mind give her a change of mind give him give her a change of thoughts a change of personality if she saw what i have seen if she knew the scripture i knew he would she wouldn't have done that give her the grace to see what she has not seen after you prayed for yourself you're all right you prayed for him you prayed for her and she's all right before you come out and now when you come out you see him you see her with a different view with a different understanding because of the prayer you have prayed for the grace of god in you and for the grace of god for him or for her and then we'll be able to deal with which other by grace in love in compassion in redemption and in reconciliation God help us. Jude chapter 1, verse 20. Jude chapter 1, but she beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. After you have prayed in the Holy Ghost, you should think in the Holy Ghost. You should behave in the Holy Ghost. We should act in the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, keep yourselves in the love of God. Draw a circle and make the inside of that circle as a picture of the love of God for you. Step inside. And anything I'm going to say, anything I'm going to do, whichever way I'm going to act, I'm keeping myself in that circle of the love of God. No word will come out. No action will come out. No facial expression will come out except as you stand, as you stay in the circle of the love of God. We're coming to point number three. Point number three, true believers of the armor of righteousness. Three things. Number one, the recklessness of the path of lawlessness. Number two, the revelation during the period of the Lord. Number three, our righteousness as partakers of this love. Look at number one. Number one, the recklessness in the path of lawlessness. Bring yourself under control. If you're saved, you're born again if you're sanctified if you're a child of god don't be lawless 
bring yourself under the control of the Lord himself because lawless people are reckless people they act recklessly they speak recklessly they approach life recklessly they drive uh, the vehicle of their lives recklessly and they they have accidents reckless people those who are reckless against their neighbors reckless against their wives reckless against their husbands reckless against their children reckless against everyone they don't care how you feel they don't care what happens to Shechem, what happens to Amma, what happens to the city they are reckless such reckless people are not favored by heaven reckless people walk in the path of lawlessness we're looking at chapter 34 of Genesis, verse 30. Genesis chapter 34, verse 30. And Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have troubled me. You love your dad. You have troubled me. You give me trauma. You give me stress. Ye have troubled me to make me stink among the inhabitants of the land among the canaanites and the parasites and i being few in number they shall gather themselves together against me and slay me and i shall be destroyed i and my house simeon levi you know what you've done god had given the promise to Abraham. And then it passed on to Isaac. The blessing of Abraham, the land, the children, as the sand at the seashore. And as the stars of heaven, all that now has passed unto me. But if I'm going to have the fulfillment of all those blessings and eventually the siege Christ will come through me I have to remain alive but now Simeon you have troubled me you have jolted me you have disturbed me and you are about to quench my land look at verse 31 did they understand no they were carnal they said should he deal with her sister as an harlot? Simeon, Levi, I hear your question. Should you, in anger, destroy the whole city? You have your question? We have our questions too. Should you deceive those people to be circumcised and then you wipe them out? You have a question? Should they deal with her sister as an harlot? Should you kill Hamo, the father, and then shake him? Should you have done that? As you point one finger to what they have done, the rest of the fingers are pointing at you. Should you send people to eternity? just because of that one offense and they're not ready and they go to hell should you have a final say in their lives that makes them to perish look at what they did reckless because they were lawless number two number two the revelation during the period of the law leviticus chapter 19 Reading from verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Rebuke him. Tell him it's not right. You have not done well. 
And if you're going to marry this, not how to marry, bring out Dinah first. We'll take Dinah back home. What has happened should not have happened. We'll then talk to daddy. We'll talk to mommy, mommy Leah. And then we'll bring decision back to you about what you've done is wrong. Make it clear. Don't use deception. Don't use diplomacy. That's not of God. It says, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Look at verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge. Thou shalt not avenge. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Let's look at number three here. Point number three. Our righteousness as partakers of his love. In Romans chapter 12, reading from verse 17, recompense to no man evil for evil. Recompense to no man, to no woman evil for evil. In the family, things happen. Two people are living together. You have different backgrounds, different way of thinking and different you're born again you're saved you're sanctified but you have your personality and because of that offenses may come things you don't appreciate may come and now in the church brothers and sisters we're saved we're born again ministers pastors christian workers but we have a different backgrounds we have levels of understanding. Some are superficial. Others a little bit deep. Others are deeper and higher. And we interact together and we belong to the same family of God. Things might happen. I don't appreciate that. Tell him. I don't accept that. Tell her, no grudge bearing, no stabbing at the back, no going to the lifestyle of Simeon and Levi and using the instruments of cruelty and stabbing them at the back or even to their face and killing them. Killing their joy, killing their vision, and killing their progress, and killing their ministry, and not caring. If it discourages him, good enough for him. If it kills his vision, good enough for him. If he does not want to get up and move on and run, there is again good enough for him, but I'm angry. And I'm going to show him how. Why are you going to do that? Are we not brothers? Is the mission and the ministry not of Christ? And if your brother, your sister is carrying on the ministry of Christ, are you so angry you're going to kill the ministry, the mission, the commission of Christ, your Savior, because of him? Be more thoughtful and be loving and come to the grace of the New Testament. Recompense to no man evil for evil, providing things honest in the sight of all men. Look at verse 18. If it be possible, as much as it lies in you, don't allow that revenge to start from you. Don't allow that retaliation to start from you. Don't allow the fight to start from you. As much as it is in your power, 
what you will do you will find the ground where you can trust the lord and believe the lord and don't allow anything anything of evil to stem out of you and what the lord has told us he has told us so we can live as he wants us to live and recompense to no man evil for evil provide things honest in the sight of all men that you as a child of god having the grace of god you as a child of god having the salvation that we testify about that we profess you as a child of god having a mission having a commission and you want to fulfill that commission and mission and you want him and you want her and you want everyone around to fulfill that commission he wants you not to recompense to any man evil for evil you know what's evil? What is done that you don't like, that you don't appreciate, that you don't accept? That's the evil. If he has done it to you and you do not appreciate it, then he will not appreciate it if you do it to her. Make up your mind that your life will be a life of grace. Give me a good amen. Your life will be a life of love. Your life will be a life of showing up mercy and considering the joy and considering the happiness of everyone around you. And if it be possible, as much as it lies on you, it says that you will live, you will act, your behavior, you'll do everything peaceably because the peace of God reigns in you. And the God of peace also reigns and controls your life as much as it lies in your power. As much as it lies starting from you, you will live peaceably with all men. And then he tells us in verse 19, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves don't revenge take that out of your life out of your action out of your behavior and let your life be like the life of christ all the things that were done to him he didn't revenge he didn't retaliate he didn't avenge himself and he tells us dearly beloved if we're dearly beloved if we're children of god if we have the grace of god if we're real children of god dearly beloved avenge not yourselves but rather give place unto wrath wrath is coming don't just stay there give place let the wrath pass by let the anger pass by let it not get into you and let it not influence your lifestyle that every day if it happened yesterday as it happens today now you say lord your grace is sufficient amen your mercy is sufficient amen your redemption is sufficient amen and you will not give chance or give place or give any liberty to wrath in your life because it says for it is written vengeance is mine and i will repay says the lord leave it in the hands of god and the lord will do what he will do somebody shout amen, amen. what's the conclusion Therefore, in verse 20, if an enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. 
the grace of God will produce the goodness of God in our lives in Jesus name the evil in the world the actions of the world the anger of the world will not change our conviction conviction of love conviction of grace conviction of living without anger and living only by the grace of God and I pray that that grace of salvation that grace of sanctification that grace of Christly attitude and Christ-like behavior will multiply in every one of our lives in Jesus name let's rise up now and take everything we've learned to the Lord in prayer the Lord has spoken to us today and has assured us we shouldn't have uh, that old nature the old nature of anger the old nature of revenge the old nature of retaliation in the family husband and wife parents and children in the office workers civil servants together in a community we live by the love of god and by the affection that comes from heaven check yourself check your life is that old nature there is that old depravity there is that old anger there is that old revenge retaliation there and does it well up so much that you will destroy a man a family neighbors friends community people because of the anger check up Settle it with the Lord. And don't think about them first, what they've done, what they're doing, the evil action. Think about yourself. Lord, why have I been like that? Why do I use deception? Why do I pretend? Why do I make them to feel at ease and yet I'm planning something? unthinkable against them settle it we cannot go to heaven with that kind of heart the heart of revenge we cannot go to heaven with that the heart of retaliation we cannot go to heaven with that kind of heart tell the Lord are you transparently loving to your husband are you transparently loving to your wife are you transparently loving to all the brothers and the sisters and your act by grace in love in mercy in friendliness in fellowship think about it take it to the lord in prayer lord circumcise my heart simeon and levi were circumcised in the flesh but are not circumcised in the heart and they were calling on other people to be circumcised tell the lord that your life will be a life yielded given surrendered to the lord make a choice are you going to be living in bitterness or living in blessedness there's danger of defilement but also roam about those who wonder about like Dinah do you roam about 
your life roam on social media wonder about you know, things you so saw on the internet on the net don't wonder about roam about you don't have enough to do that will keep your interest at home tell the Lord that habit the habit of wonders that the Lord will cancel it and crush it away from your life the life of deception in talk in convincing other people to do something when you know you're actually leading them in an errand that will destroy their lives. Deception will carry damnation to the Lord denounces, condemns that act that will injure the life of any other person here on earth or will jeopardize their eternity and if you affect the eternity of people in a negative way and you never think about it you do not have the mind of Christ he died for the people but you rather because of what they've done against you you rather they die and go to hell your mind is different from that of Christ. Why don't you tell the Lord, Lord, I want the heart, the mind, the spirit of Christ. The word of God forbids revenge, retaliation. And thoughtless, wanton destruction of the lives of others. If they know something you don't appreciate, tell them. Are you afraid of them? Face them. Tell them it's not right. Don't bother about consequences. That's better than killing them. Pray for them. Pray for yourself. Let the grace of God come in your heart and live at the center of the love of God. True believers for the armor of righteousness. Lawless people are reckless. They don't show the evidence of salvation reckless reckless in their drive reckless in their actions reckless in the way of deception reckless because they are lawless why don't you pray that lord being a child of god recklessness and lawlessness will not be part of my life anymore no revenge no retaliation pure sincere transparent love of god and true righteousness as partakers of the love of Calvary. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. And the people of God said, yeah. Father, 
We thank you for the revelation of your word. We thank you for the truth. We thank you, Lord, for the love of God, which is shed abroad in the heart of every true believer. Lord, we pray that all the actions of revenge, of anger, of animosity, of hatred, of retaliation in the past, wipe Peter from every heart, every life, in Jesus' name. Lord, help us to be conscious of heaven every time. Conscious that Christ may come at any time and the best place, the best position to be is not the position of anger, of violence, of, um, of hatred, of retaliation, of fighting. Lord, help us to be conscious that since you can come at any time, your grace must fill our heart every time in Jesus' name. And when we feel offended, something has happened to our diner, something has happened to our daughter, something has happened to our son, something has happened to our wife or husband, help us, Lord, to stop first and not to rush into action, but to have your love in our heart, your affection in our heart and the grace of God to fill our heart in Jesus name help us Lord to have the sincerity the honesty and the boldness and the courage to approach the one that has done evil and say I come to you in the name of the Lord this is not right and to set you lead face to face like a courageous soldier of the cross in jesus name lord fill our hearts again with your love fill our hearts again with your affection and give us the boldness and the courage to go through life in the peace of god in the love of god in the conviction of christ in jesus name Help us, Lord, to bring other people into life, eternal life, and to heal, help people and lead them to heaven, not to hell, in Jesus' name. Let there be peace in every heart, the joy of the Lord in every heart, and reliance upon your mercy and your grace upon every heart, in Jesus' name. Why? away the past give us a new life and lead us to the next level of always living like christ will want us to live thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray